when planning dives, everybody thinks about the easy things like the maximum depth you should dive to, the maximum time you can spend there, and how much air you can use before you have to turn around. But depth, time, and air are the three things you must plan minimum. There's actually a fourth, and the fourth is split into many things that I'm gonna cover in the next short series of videos. These are all called the what ifs. This includes things like, how should the dive plan be changed if we get cold, or if we keep experiencing cramp, dealing with current, if there's surge, if you have equipment failure, if you experience narcosis, if a diver goes missing. If you don't discuss each and every one of these before the dive with the team members, then nobody will know what to do in the event of one of these what ifs happening underwater. You should never assume that another diver knows exactly what to do if there's a problem, unless you've both discussed before the dive exactly how you'd go about handling that problem. For example, if we're headed to the wreck in the middle, the Carwella, the compass bearing is 160 degrees from the ladder where you'll enter. You start on a shallow reef and then there's a drop off where potentially, depending on visibility, you won't be able to see the bottom, so you'll be swimming in the blue. Now to make sure you make the wreck, you need to swim on the compass bearing, keep the team together, but also if there's current, you need to adjust the compass to suit. So one of the things you can do, like the guys are doing here, is stopping at the end of the drop off and they're performing a current check. So they're looking at the grass, they're looking to see if they move along the wall before they leave it. 